Hello, my beautiful people. Welcome to your channeled message reading. This is the Dream Clairvoyant. Thank you so much for tuning in. I do hope you are all doing well. So for my channeled message readings, it does not matter what your sign is. Anyone, regardless of your gender, regardless of your zodiac sign, may resonate with this message. But as always, I do ask that you only take what resonates and leave what does not. Do not force anything to resonate with you. Um, if you believe that this message is not for you, that's okay. You're always welcome to watch my other readings here on my channel. Most of all of my readings are timeless anyways, so it doesn't really matter when you view it. It may still resonate with you. Please use your discernment. Let's get started. What is the message? Judication. Hmm. Tell us more, please. Despair. Wow. It's like dun dun dun. <laughs> Community, toil and labor. Okay. All right. Let's get started. So we're going to use the Kipper deck mixed with, I want to use the Rider Tarot deck. Of course, this is a classic deck. So Judication, I just heard Review. Right when I looked at the Judication card, I heard Review. Okay, Clarify Judication. As you can see in the depiction here, in the illustration, it does look like they are in court. And there is a judge reviewing this case. Three of Wands. So this is about something that you turned your back on. Okay, if this message is for you, there is a review of an incident, a circumstance, or we'll just call it a situation that you were in from the past, but you've turned your back on it. Like the three of wands is when you're looking ahead, you're looking at what's to come, you know, waiting for your ships to sail in. And you see how this, this person here, they really have their entire back like turned, you know, away from their past. I really do feel like you're over something, like you've healed from something, you've healed, you've recovered, and you're, you've moved, you've moved on, you've moved forward. But I feel like there is a review going on here of a situation that occurred in the past that, that involves you, the hermit. So the hermit talks about healing, isolation, recovery. It talks about, um, you know, self-discovery. Notice how this individual is actually in the dark and they're using their only source of light, which is this lamp. So I feel like someone has gone back and done some research, some digging up, and they've reviewed something here, but you, like, you're over it, okay? Uh, tell us more about this judication. Yeah. So who is this? This person is a knight of swords. Could be an air sign. They don't have to be. Or they're simply sitting in the energy of a knight of swords. So the knight of swords is someone who's like a swift action taker. This could be someone who's young or just young in spirit. This is someone who um, can be quite impulsive. This is the type of person who does tend to act before they think. Knight of swords is the type of person who just takes action. You know, this is sort of like a by all means necessary sort of person. They jump the gun pretty much. They don't wait for anyone. Um, this is someone who is very sharp, exact, straightforward. They may be a little bit cutting or abrupt, but this is just a fast, a fast moving indiv individual. This person is also carrying the energy of a hierophant. So here's the here are the possibilities, okay? Take it how it resonates. With the hierophant, the hierophant could represent marriage, some sort of oath 
or soul contract so this could definitely be a soulmate where maybe the two of you had took some sort of oath or you guys have some sort of soulmate contract here maybe you guys are married in this lifetime or you were married in the in the previous lifetime the hierophant could also talk about tradition someone who's traditional they have conventional views this could be someone who's very religious they really just stick to the text um the Hierophant, sometimes it can represent confessing in order to receive forgiveness, but I actually feel like it's representing who this person is to you. This could literally be someone who you're married to, or there was some sort of marriage in a past life, or there was an oath that was taken between the two of you okay this oh, this may also be someone who's religious or they just they're very they have very traditional views, okay. So this is just to help you pinpoint who this person may be, but they carry this energy of the Knight of Swords and the Hierophant. Okay, Three of Pentacles. So the Three of Pentacles talks about a collaboration, studying something, recognizing something. Clarify the Three of Pentacles. Clarify the Three of Pentacles. I feel like this person is all in your business or they have been in your business on the back you have the eight of wands okay i feel like um this person checks they like they check on you a lot is what i'm seeing here and they're suspicious of you they've been i feel like this person has been studying you and they're so nosy, like they've been digging digging in your business. They're trying to see what's going on in your life and who you have around you, who you're with is what I just heard very clearly. Like if you're with someone and they, they believe that you are with someone, but they're being nosy to see who it is. So some of you are really with someone or you're not with someone and this person is just paranoid because you do have the Eight of Swords. Like they're investigating. Oh my gosh. <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're investigating. But the Eight of Swords is like when you're stuck on something, stuck on someone, being in this mental prison. Four of Pentacles. Four of Pentacles is when you have an attachment to something. It could even represent being selfish, greedy. Hmm. Two of Pentacles, juggling instability. Yeah. This person feels like you have another person around. They are going crazy. Like they're digging in your business, investigating you. They want to know so badly who this other person is. The Eight of Swords, Eight of Swords talks about being stuck in your head, you know, they're just, it, they can't move on. The only thing, they're stuck on who this person may be. And a few of you, you may not even have someone. This person's very stingy. They hold on to you, but they don't give you what it is that you want. And they feel like you're juggling them. Like there's another person who has caught your eye. There's like rumors that are starting about this too with the Eight of Wands. I know the Eight of Wands is not a rumor card. Perhaps they received a message about you possibly being with someone or they heard gossip because the Eight of Wands could be communication, like swift, swift communication. This person does keep tabs on you. Clarify the Eight of Wands. Ten of Pentacles and the King of Wands. So they want to be the one. Oh, okay. So this person does have a competitive nature. 
they want to be the one okay i feel like i'm talking to someone who's like a nine of pentacles one of you is a nine of pentacles one of you is very successful and well accomplished and success takes place in all forms every time you accomplish a goal that is success one of you is very successful and well accomplished one of you is sitting in the nine of pentacles energy either you or them and they're the maximum pentacle in the deck is 10 so if you're at nine pentacles you pretty much have it all you're just missing that 10 pentacle which is most likely love that ideal partnership they want to be your ten of pentacles like they want to come in and give you your ten pentacles so that the both of you can have the ten of pentacles together you like and i feel like this is how everyone sees you whoever is the nine of pentacles everyone sees you as someone who's extremely valuable i feel like you have a lot of admirers whether they say it or not people look up to you people are inspired by you you have the ideal life people actually i feel like people would like to be friends with you and talk to you and get insight and advice people may see you as someone who's like a big manifester you just get things done and they see that you are living the life you know you're living the ideal life there's great admiration here when people talk about you like you are the type of person if you're the nine of pentacles you're the type of person who gets good spotlight good attention where when your name is brought up people are like talking highly about you so they know that you're high in demand and that's why they're carrying this king of wands energy they're very passionate for you they're very determined for you they're willing to fight they're willing to stand their ground as a matter of fact they're hurt over this over over you getting the ten of pentacles with someone else because everyone knows if you're the nine of pentacles a life with you is 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 an ideal life the ten of pentacles is the ultimate um you know success it is it is the life of it is a life of the ultimate success abundance stability security generational wealth there's commitments, there's loyalty, you know, and they're hurt. Like just the, the, the thought of you, just the thought of you getting your 10th pentacle from someone else, getting this stability, this commitment from another person, three of swords, they're hurt. And this person feels like you're busy. Maybe you're the kind of person who stopped posting. Maybe you stopped posting a lot on social media because they do spy on you. You start posting a lot on social media and so they feel like it's because you're literally busy spending time with like the other person. They feel like someone is really in your life, like someone has your attention now. Some of you, you don't have someone. Some of you, maybe you just took a break from social media. You're just living your life. Like it's something, the strength on the back of the deck. They're having a difficult moment here. Nine of Swords is when you're in great distress. The maximum the maximum sword is 10 and they're at nine swords. The swords are all about your mental. Okay. The Nine of Swords talks about um, like when you're having sleepless nights, this person's mental health is not good. It's all over the place because they're fearful that you are really like spending time with other people. You've moved on. You're living your life. Yeah, Page of Swords, they spy on you. It's a big spying card. They most likely watch you from a distance. Five of Cups, they are regretful. Six of Pentacles, they want to invest in you. There's fears here that it may not be a requited love anymore. But they do want to requite the love. Like they're they're fearful that you won't requite the love, that you're not interested. They're fearful that it's no longer this equal give and take, or like there's no longer a mutual interest here. Clear for the three of wands. I feel like they want to talk about it now, but I feel like you've moved on. Like they literally, like with judication here, they want to review things with you. Like they want to ask you where, like what went wrong? Where was the, where was the miscommunication? I think someone just can't believe that you're really over them and you're, you're living your life. Clear for the three of wands. Yeah, the moon. The, okay, so the moon could represent like secrets, deception, uh, something that's just hidden from your point of view, or it could represent hidden feelings and emotions. You're carrying this energy where you've turned your back and you're like mysterious. You're the, you're the moon. 
No one knows what you're doing or what you're up to. Did, like, you could have ghosted this person or you just kind of took a step back because they were watching you. They were seeing you consistently. So I don't know if the two of you, like, were bumping into each other or seeing each other at some place, but you just ghosted them or you took a step back from social media if they were if they were spying on you through social media. You this person feels like you just up and left. You just it's like I don't see you anymore. Where are you? Who are you with? Yeah, you're living your life. <laughs> the chariot, you're living your life. You know? That's what we're called to do. Don't be stuck on anyone. Don't slow yourself down. Life is too precious. You know, the chariot talks about um, forward movement. Literally, it's forward movement. Someone who's prepared to go on their journey. And I'm hearing some of you have big things coming in. New love, new job, new relocation opportunity. Like the world card is here. The world card talks about completion. The world card talks about completion. It also talks about change, changes, you getting a favored outcome. Look, the fool, a, a new beginning, taking a leap of faith into a new beginning. You've closed this, this, this chapter, this cycle, and you've moved forward. But someone here is still bothered over something that happened. And I feel like the only reason why they're bothered is because you are unbothered. It bothers them seeing that you have moved on and that you're that they're not on your mind. You're living carefree. You don't have flashbacks about this person. You're living life. And that's what we're called to do. That's what you're supposed to do. And I'm proud of you. Celebrate yourself. Congratulate, congratulate yourself because it could have taken you a long time to get over this person. That's why they're so bothered. I don't see anything here. I don't see anything wrong that you're doing here. I just see someone who is so bothered over your peace of mind, that you are at peace, that you are content, you're free, you're moving forward. Clarify this Knight of Swords. Six of Swords. Moving things from rough waters to calmer waters. So now they want to come in. This is someone who moves very quickly. What they're thinking about is how they can move things forward with you. See all the swords in the boat because that's what they did to you. Even if they're able to move forward from you. So this is what they did to you. They did a ten of swords to you. Even if they come in and try to move, move things forward with you, there's still six swords that you'll be carrying in your back. What does that mean? That some of the damage that they did cannot be undone. So you're going to go from a ten of swords to a six of swords. There's not a big difference here. Four swords difference. So that shows that this person caused a lot of damage that just can't be undone. Sometimes you just have to forgive someone without rekindling because of the extent that they went to hurt you. You can say, and, and to forgive someone is not for them. It's for us. Forgiving, for, you have to forgive yourself to, in order to forgive others. Forgiving yourself for not knowing better and now that you do know better, now, and now that you know better, you can do better. You can move forward with the, with the wisdom, the lessons that you took from, them, from this person, right? Forgiving someone, forgiving yourself in order to forgive someone is saying, I release you and the burdens, the baggage, the pain that you caused me. And as I forgive you, I release those burdens. I'm not carrying it anymore. I'm not carrying a heavy heart anymore. I'm not carrying that weight on my, on my back, on my shoulder anymore. I'm not carrying a heavy heart anymore. Forgive and forget. It doesn't mean that it didn't happen. It just means that you're no longer, that this person is no longer significant to your life. And also what they did to you is no longer significant to your life because you've let it go. You've released it. 
there's power in forgiving people. There really is. It, it's all about your benefit. It, it benefits you, but you have to find the strength to forgive yourself. And I feel like you've done it. Like you, you're living your life. So even if they come in and move forward, it, like there's, it's going to go from a 10 to a 6. So I know this person did damage. But I also know that you got great character development from it. I also know that you took that pain and turned it into power. I also know that it gave you greater discernment when it comes to selecting people, places, and things who are going to be in your life. I also know that it made you even more wise. I mean, what, what does this person want? Because they're all fired up here, wanting to fight for you and stand their ground. But I mean, what is there to fight for? Clarify adjudication. Yeah, they're unhappy with the results. They want a review. So the fact that they want a review means that this already happened. The chaos already happened. The ending already happened. But I guess they're unhappy with the conclusion. They're unhappy with the ending. So what does that say? That, that they've realized that they're the one who took a loss. Maybe this person actually didn't care. Whatever they did to you, they some of you didn't even receive uh, an apology. They just didn't care. Because they thought that all the baggage was on you. But I feel like you flipped the script around. By leaving this person alone and moving forward in your life, they are now forced to feel the baggage. That's why they're having these sleepless nights. That's what happens when you just leave people alone. They're forced to, to take accountability for what they did. But the more you try to move towards them and the you just won't leave them alone, you end up carrying baggage of something you didn't do. Leave them alone and they'll be forced to sit in that silence. Even if they ignore it in the beginning, they will be forced to take accountability because you're no, you're no longer in the picture. Look, 10 of wands. And I literally just talked about baggage. I didn't even notice the 10 of wands on the back. Ten of Wands, past baggage, burdens, and stress. Now it's all on them because you've left. No one else can take on the burdens. When you were actively in this person's life or trying to be in their life, you were the one who was taking the burdens. But when you remove yourself, they're the only ones who's there now. So they have to carry this burden. There's power and peace in, in leaving people alone, simply leaving them alone. It speaks volumes. Especially when you don't fight with them, you don't argue with them, you don't chase them like how they want you, like how they want you to. There's there's power in that. So now this person in the Four of Cups, they're asking for a review. Like, okay, can we talk about this? Where did we go wrong? What happened? As if they didn't know. They knew what they did. They just didn't care in the beginning because you were the one who was carrying the baggage. But now that you've left, now they're unhappy. People like this are exhausting. I've experienced people like this in, in real life. And honestly, just continue to ignore them. Because they want you to respond. Now they want a reaction. Now they want to talk about things. But when they had the time to talk about things and resolve issues and explain themselves, they didn't. And people like this, they are, they are an enemy of progress. They really are. People like this are an enemy of progress because the second you they see that you've moved forward and left them alone, now they want to come in because they want you stuck in the past. They're so unhappy. Four of Cups, rejection, feeling unfulfilled. But I bet you they, they didn't feel this way when they were actually wronging you. No, they didn't. They felt satisfied with the Nine of Cups. So they went from nine of cups, satisfaction and fulfillment. That's what the nine of cups went to. And now they're the four of now they're the four of cups. Rejection, dissatisfaction, and unfulfillment. See what happens when you just leave people alone, just leave toxic people alone. That's what happens. They may even be carrying this higher fun energy because maybe they have a God complex. Maybe they feel like, you know, they can do no wrong. And even when they wrong you, you should be the one trying to work things out with them. You should be the one, the one seeking their forgiveness. These are the source, the types of people where they do you wrong and they really try to convince themselves that they're not the problem, that maybe even they're the victim. Yeah, this person has a God complex and they need to be humbled. And the way to humble people like this, just ignore them. 
Don't give them much to feed off. Yeah, you're sitting in the Empress energy. Beautiful. Yeah, I don't see anything wrong with what you're doing. I mean, really, you guys know that I'm very fair. I don't sugarcoat anything. The Empress, I, I don't know any other, I don't have any other critiques or advice to give you because I feel like you handled this so well. You handle this person in such a, in such a skillful, skillful way. Like, I'm very proud of you. And you should be proud of yourself as well. You kept your peace and you just move forward. The, the Empress. The Empress is the most powerful woman in the deck. And yes, you can be a male and carry this Empress energy. I actually feel like this is how they're seeing you. So when someone sees you as the, as the Empress, they're putting you on a pedestal. They look up to you. They're inspired by you. You're, you're the most, you know, the Empress is the most powerful feminine energy in the deck. This is someone who's loving, kind, nurturing, has it all, like, more than a 10 out of 10. Like this is everyone's ideal wife or husband. Whoever's carrying this energy. People look up to you. People, And I was telling you, you have good attention on you. You have a good reputation. If this person tried to ruin your reputation, it surely didn't work. You're sitting here as the empress and the star. The spotlight's on you, baby. It probably backfired. Whatever they're trying to do now, they're sitting there feeling like a loser. This person is bored. Their life is dried up. There's no entertainment. They're watching you because you're the entertainment in a way, in a good way, because your life is amazing. People are watching you. People are keeping up to you. Like, what's next? What's the what's the next big thing? This person is in the audience watching you and they once had access to you, but they abused it. So now all they can do is spy on you and be a part of the audience. They don't have close. They don't have access to you anymore. Look at you, the star. You're everyone's wish fulfillment. You're everyone's ideal partner. You better recognize it. Mm -hmm. You're the star. Your star shines brighter than the other ones. The star is wish fulfillment. You get everything that you want. And it's for a reason. It's because of what you went through in the past and you learned all the lessons. Not everyone can be the empress. Like you have to really, the empress is someone who definitely overcame many obstacles in their life. But they came out redeemed. They came out with like as an even better person. Like the empress is, is the type of person where they may have been treated without love. Taken advantage of, abused, rejected, outcasted. Someone who didn't have much love in their life, but she blossoms into an empress because she she makes a decision. She's like, you know what? I was I was mistreated, but I'm gonna make sure to treat people right rightfully. You know? This person didn't give me love, but I'm going to rise above that and give myself love. This person was not nurturing or, or caring towards me, but I'm going to make sure to nurture and care for other people. The Empress rises above obstacles, issues, conflict, adversaries. The Empress is always like the bigger person. Oh, this person, you know, they cause an injustice. I'm going to make sure to not do that to another person. What I didn't receive, I'm going to make sure to give it to myself and give it to other people as well. The Empress is all about redemption. It takes a special person to have this title. Yeah, Nine of Wands, Wounded Warrior. You look at the Empress, you may not know what her story is. You may not see her scar, but she has scars that she carries as her badge of honor. Because it's those scars that beautifully transformed her into the Empress. All four queens put together. I feel like this is someone who has a beautiful personality. Mature, wise, insightful. Very intelligent as well. King of Swords is all about law and order. Discipline. 
they had to learn discipline. This could have been someone who didn't have much discipline over their empathy, so they would often get ran over, taken advantage of. Not anymore. King of Swords is very sharp, bold. This is someone who's very straightforward, communicative. This is someone who will tell you exactly how they feel and set you straight, put you in your place. King of Swords is someone of honesty, integrity, transparency. This is someone who has great, excellent character. King of Swords sees things clearly as well. This is someone who can see through the nonsense and the BS. The sun. Yeah, this person beautifully transformed. Because they worked on themselves. They took all the experiences, even the, the negative experiences, the unfair experiences. They took it all and they accepted it as their part of the journey. And they took all the lessons. This is not someone who sat in pity. No, this person took all the lessons and rose above it. And now they're literally above it. Like this is someone who's on a pedestal. People look up to this individual. I'm even hearing that this is someone who has a helping hand. So, and it makes sense because the Empress is very caring. This person has a helping hand. They help other people who have faced the same things. The same adversity as them because they want others to rise, rise, rise above their own issues as well. They want other people to have their own platform as well. You know, this is just a like this person is just beautiful, like inside and out. Who's whosever energy this is, I, I'm loving it. Your character is beautiful. The sun, the sun talks about happiness, fulfillment, growth, expansion, fertility, fertility, illumination. It's only up from here. Bigger, brighter days. This person has healed beautifully. You know, this person is enlightened. They're spiritually awakened. They have a higher a higher uh, perspective of things. They, This person has accepted their divine journey, their divine past. Everything was divinely orchestrated in their, in their favor. Even the ups and the downs, they accept it. It was a beautiful journey. May have not been easy, but it was beautiful because this is a beautiful person here. Wow. So we're going to end the reading here. I don't want it to be too long. We're going to take it on um, into the extended. So we're going to uncover the messages of despair. Mm. Um, let me see. Community, toil, and labor. Mm -mm -mm. Looks like I don't think something's good good is coming for someone here and if you are you know the empress here the sun card is here happiness is coming in for you but another person has despair i think someone here may be very like uh frustrated they're literally in despair over the loss of you because they're seeing how beautiful you transformed and that really it was their loss all along hmm wow well I mean, we all, we live and we learn. This may be a very powerful lesson that they have to learn as well, you know, they, and if they can learn it, they may be able to manifest a healthier relationship, you know, but we're going to talk about this because despair is here, community and toil and labor. It doesn't look like it's going to be very good for someone here. Okay. But we're going to end the reading here. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really hope that this message resonated. I hope it helped bring in some clarity, confirmation, and guidance. Um, and yeah, if you're interested in connecting with me more, definitely check out the description box. All my information is there. Um, like I said, the link is going to be in the description box as well. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to support the channel. Thank you guys. Take care.